I'm Heather McDermott with Area TV, and we're here at the Montreal International Game Summit. And I'm here with Frank Delise, who's a senior product manager for the Autodesk Games Group. And Frank actually did a presentation at Unreal University here at MIGS. Frank, tell me what the presentation was all about. Sure. So it was all about today uh, showing Maya and Max content getting into the UDK using uh, FBX. So we're showing a whole FBX workflow of Max and Maya creating static objects like buildings, how to get a vehicle in, how to get a character in, um, and showing everything from you know animation and all kinds of really cool tools around FBX. So Frank, you uh, actually worked on Battlefield 2 and Frontline. So tell me, what are some of the challenges that artists face in developing uh, games? Sure. So one thing is we noticed over time is a lot of these in a game development environment, people make plugins or developers make their own plugins to export content out of Max or Maya and into their proprietary game engine. And in this case, maybe it's uh, the UDK. Um, so we noticed this challenge over the years that this di exporters did different things. They didn't always support everything that we that we had in the tools. So the FBX format really changed that. So FBX format is really like an interop, interop um, a format to be, go between Max or Maya and, and our internal tools. But we noticed that outside developers were really picking up on this and saying, hey, we want to start loading FBX content too, because it's got, it, it you know, captures cameras and lights and static objects and uh, everything you can do inside the tools. So uh, we really wanted to, um, you know, make sure that the artists had those same, the same capabilities in their own engines. So today we're really showing that, showing how, uh, how using Maximaya, exporting the FBX, and actually taking that content and bringing it into a game engine. Tell me a little bit about the flexibility of FBX. So are there any restrictions in using it? No, that's the great thing about FBX is it really supports everything that the, the tools offer. So today, you know, I showed a lot of the FBX format bringing in stuff like um, the object itself, the textures, materials, uh, animation. So it really helps the artist to make sure that the, uh, the mesh is smooth the right way or the, the vertices are in the right spot and everything comes in nice and clean. And the FBX format really gives you that nice, clean format that supports everything inside the tools. So it's, it's a really clean, clean interop between the Maximaya into the engine itself. And what about users who are using FBX with the Visual Studio environment? Yeah, it's a great new addition this year is uh, Visual Studio uh, 11 uh, preview is out now. And uh, one of the key things that we, uh, we worked with uh, Microsoft on is getting FBX directly inside of Visual Studio. A lot of times you want to create your own uh, viewing mechanisms to view FBX files or have your own design review process in internally. So if you're writing a new viewer, now you have access directly to FBX, so you can create a viewer that loads that content directly from Max and Maya in your own applications. And you can use it for many different things. And so if you're a user and you want to implement FBX into your workflow, what kind of uh, support uh, is available from Autodesk? Sure, so FBX uh, is natively in Max and Maya, so you'll be able to get the to the tools directly from that. But also there's an SDK available where if you're a developer and you have your own custom engine, you can actually use the FBX SDK to import that content directly into your engine. That's something we really want to help the developers with. We want to make sure that the FBX format is getting into all the engines out there and so we're there to support that in a big way. And can you tell me a bit about Autodesk's vision for FBX in the future? Sure, FBX is, I think, at the early stages of really what it can do. Right now, it's, again, it's this, this incredible interop uh, tool, but we see it also going into more live linking of the, of the content directly with technology. So we see FBX taking a bigger and bigger steps in its role instead of getting content into an engine, getting that art to engine process and iteration time really, really tight and fast and, and uh, you know, break, making it as live as possible. Okay, thanks Frank. Um, you can learn more about FBX actually by watching Frank's presentation that he did uh, at Unreal University here at MIGS. So you can check that out on Area TV. And uh, thanks for watching Area TV here at MIGS.